Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus. We had a beautiful Sunday morning talking about our talents, our gifts, our abilities, those special things that God has given us, the Holy Spirit has given us, and then some other special gifts that God has placed into us, or as I said in the message, that we've earned in life. I think that something was there for everybody in this sermon, so listen in, and my goodness, please be encouraged. God bless you. Thank you. Let's pray. God, we come to you in Jesus' name. Thank you for this glorious morning that you've given us. You are already working. You are in the midst. I just don't want to get in the way. I don't want to get in the way. So don't let me get in the way even of this message, God, of what you still want to say and what you want to speak into our lives in this part two in this series, God. Do what you want to do. Say what you want to say. Speak into our hearts what you want to speak. We love you. Help me with it today. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Turn to the person next to you and say, you look fantastic. No. And our after church meeting, by the way, has been postponed, the street team, so please just know that. That uh, my, 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 please, please uh, pardon, pardon the interruption, PTI, amen. And, uh, but but uh, we'll have, we're going to have it very soon, and Christmas is here, so we're trying to decide whether to, we should wait until right after Christmas. Uh, I've got two scriptures for you today, two opening scriptures. This is part two, but it's a standalone message, so you walk in today, you're going to get the message you need for today. Amen? Amen. Uh, Matthew 6, 19 to 21 says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal, for where your treasure is there will your heart be also. Who wants your heart in heaven? Who wants your heart in heaven? And then this next scripture I'm going to read to you is a story that we looked at last week, Luke 12, 16, and Jesus told them a parable saying the land of a rich man was very productive. And he began reasoning to himself saying, what shall I do since I have no place to store my crops? And then he said, this is what I will do. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones and there I will store all my grain and my goods and I will say to my soul, soul, everybody say soul, you have many goods laid up for many years to come. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. Now understand, that's the that's a harshest term that can be used. You fool, this very night your soul is required of you, and now who will own what you have prepared? So is the man who stores up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Uh, last, week, uh, last week I told you that, that this man was desiring to store up three things, and last week we talked about time, and this week the, the, the second thing that he wanted to store up was talent. The second thing he wanted to store up was his gifts. Today the world is, is, uh, is just about talent obsessed, are we not? Uh, if I can just get a video of me doing something really great but really stupid that maybe nobody else will do that's stupider than everybody else will do, then maybe everybody will see it. So people have videos of themselves doing crazy things, and then there are just really great things like shooting amazing basketball shots and doing incredible skateboard jumps and bike tricks and and uh, magic tricks and jumping from roof to roof and we got TV shows, we got America's Got Talent and American Idol and America's Next Top Model and Dancing with the Stars, America and America, America and the American, American, American Talent Show of America. <coughs> You'd almost think that talent is a very small, random, uh, only some people get any of it uh, idea. If you had talent, you'd be on television. If you had talent, you'd be on one of those shows. People tell me all the time, all the time, Rowdy, I have no talent. Why? 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 Because they can't do what they see portrayed as talent on television. People tell me all the time, I can't sing, I can't dance, I can't act, I can't play an instrument, I'm not designed for a catwalk, I'm not tall, I'm not thin. I mean, we have, we have a really narrow view of what talent is. If somebody can hit a baseball a long ways, that's what we see as talent. If somebody can leap in the air and catch a football or do a magnificent three spins in the air on ice skates or jump 30 feet in the sky in a snowboard, those are the only things that we see as talent. And yet, well, I want to say to you today that there are far more talented people in the world than the ones that we call talented, whose talents we never see because we don't qualify their talent as talent. I believe that things like determination and courage and discipline and temperament, those are also talents. I believe that we are not born with every talent we have in life. I believe some talents are acquired. And in fact, the Bible proves this point, which, which, it, which it tells us that when we become Christians, God's Holy Spirit gives to us spiritual gifts, spiritual abilities that we did not previously have. In 1 Corinthians 12, 
God lays out the various different giftings uh, that he gives, the spiritual giftings, and it says, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 11, it is the one and only spirit who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. Now, the scripture says two vital things. Number one, it says that God alone decides which gift each person should have. Are you with me? And don't miss it. Number two says each person. That means every person has a gift. And it says that it's God who has chosen what gift that you have. And just to make it clearer, 1 Corinthians 7, 7 says, I wish that, of, that, that all of you were as I am, Paul is saying. But each of you has your own gift from God. One has this gift. Another has that gift. Again, God is saying that everybody has a spiritual gifting from God, but hold on for a second, because he says, I wish that all of you were as I am. He's saying, I wish all of you had my gift. Well, what's his gift? Point, Paul is pointing out here that he has a special gift too. Single people, listen up. Paul is saying here that his singleness is a gift. Some of you are single, and some of you are single again. And if you think being single is tough, try and being single again. Somebody say amen. But singleness has to be managed. And if you correctly manage singleness, singleness is a gift. In the scripture, Paul recognizing that the state he is in has been divinely planned by God. It's no accident he is who he is. It's no accident he is where he is. It's no accident he is what he is. And that it's all by the hand of God. And we know the scripture that God gives good gifts to his children. He doesn't give anything else. So if God gave it, God sent it, and God did it, guess what? It's a gift. And so Paul found a blessed way to use his gift of singleness to God's advantage to bless the kingdom. Every gift you have is put in you to bless the kingdom. You're going to hear that all day. This is vitally important for those of you who would not wish for nor choose to be single. Let's go to the next one here, will you, Ryan? Because God's gifts come in unexpected shapes and sizes. Look, single friends, single people, write this down. Get out your pen. Just get your phone out and take a picture. Singleness is not a trial to be endured. It is a gift to be maximized. Singleness is not a trial to be endured. It is a gift to be maximized. That sounds so good. Some of you married people wish you were single right now, don't you? No. Thank you, Stan. No way. When you are single, you have a unique ability. You've got a freedom to seek God, to pray to God, to call on God, to do whatever you need to do. In, in fact, one of the struggles of a Christian marriage is the two of you learning to be one, while at the same time the two of you having the freedom to do all that God has called you to do, while at the same time making sure that the other person does not suffer or experience a lack of communion that marriage requires to be successful. Woo, say that five times fast. My wife allows me to not only to be her husband, which is a gift, but she allows me to be a child of God, which she understands is a greater gift. And most of you, 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 most of you, I don't know if your husbands, if your wife would allow you to, to get up in the middle of the night and go into the closet and start singing songs into your phone. They, they might have you committed, amen? I, I mean, I, you're, most of you, your wife, when she's trying to go to sleep, wouldn't allow you to suddenly turn your phone on because God just gave you something to say and you need to quick write it down for your, for your sermon. Mo, mo, most of you. So my wife, my wife, I have learned to operate as a husband within the parameters of my marriage as a child of God, and my wife has learned to operate in her gifts in the parameters of our marriage as a child of God, and so we work in, in, in perfect communion, in unity, recognizing that who we are for God is first before we are who we are for each other. Woo, say that five times fast too. 1 Corinthians 7, 7b says, God gives the gift of the single life to some, the gift of the married life to others. Marriage is a gift also, but it is no less a gift than singleness. You didn't know I was going here today, did you? But my word, it is amazing what time you have to do for God when you are single and you recognize that you are whole. And, and let me add this, 1 Corinthians seven seventeen, and don't be wishing you were someplace else or with somebody else. Where you are right now is God's place for you. Live and obey and love and believe right there. Woo, I'm letting the word preach today, amen? Friends, you're going you're to find so much more joy when you quit wanting to be somewhere else with someone else 
having somebody else's life, somebody else's gifts or abilities or opportunities. You are talented in your own way, in your own place. And it is a necessary place and a necessary uh, a talent for you to perform God's will, which will go forth and do in the lives around you all that God wants you to do. My, 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 my skin, uh, we talked about skin today as a joke, but my skin is as lily white as it can be. You won't, you won't mind that I'd rather be a, a little tanner, would you mind? That would be okay? And uh, now, now if you see your, if you, if, if, now uh, Eloise and, and, and Margie understand that Pastor would like to have some darker skin. Would that be okay, Eloise? That would be all right? That would be all right, you understand? But if you see your skin as a curse that you're in, you could not comprehend somebody else wanting to be in it. If you think that you're cursed because you're in the position that you were in, or you're the person you were in, or that you were born that you were, the way that you are, you could not comprehend that somebody else would want to have what you have and be where you are and be who you are. But if you see it that God divinely made you who you are, made you what you are, made you the color you are on purpose, you can see the blessing that it is. My, my wife, I'll just tell you, I'm as white as can be. My wife is yellow as can be. Amen? And, 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 and it, it used to confound her a bit. She has very yellow skin. If you saw the two of us together, you go, oh my goodness, she's yellow. But, but, but because every time she'd go to the doctor, the doctor would say, well, you must be very sick and your skin is very yellow and, and our baby Sophie came out yellow. We think that she must have jaundice and she must have this syndrome and she must have this. And we're like, look at my wife. She's yellow. We're yellow. We're yellow people. But... <laughs> But listen, it was hard to find makeup for it. The doctors would torment her about it. And, and several years ago, we headed over to minister in Southeast uh, Asia. We went over to Asia and uh, put that picture up there, Ryan. I, I'm telling you, we, 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 we no longer got on Singapore Airlines flight than the Asian flight attendants were walking past and staring at Ashley and smiling and giggling at Ashley. And we, and we thought, what in the world? They were, they were just gushing over Ashley and gushing and more than usual, the usual gushing she gets, which is all the time from me, from me, obviously. And uh, finally, finally, one of them comes up and the other ones are behind her like this. I mean, oh, this is, we're on this prestigious airline and they're, they're dressed in these, these beautiful gowns and one, and, and one of them comes up and says, she says, excuse me, she says to Ashley, Ashley says, yes. She says, I, I, I'm sorry to ask. She says, but, 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 but are, are you a mix? And Ash, Ashley said, excuse me? And, 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 and am, am I what, you know? And more flight attendants come up, and she said again, she goes, are, are you a mix? And Ashley said, what do you, what do you mean? And she said, are, are, you, are you half Asian? And, well, Ashley had this black, black hair at the time, this beautiful yellow skin, and they thought that she was Asian. And let me tell you, she was so honored. Oh, my goodness. She said, oh, she turned to me, she said, I wish I was. I wish I was. And every, listen, everywhere we went, and, and, uh, and we stopped through Taiwan and Hong Kong and Malaysia and Singapore, everywhere we went, everybody wanted to talk to Ashley and be around her, and young girls coming up and wanting to just stand by her, and you should have see, seen, I had pictures at a church where Ashley's just standing there, well, not that yet, but that's okay, and, 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 they're, and, they're, and they're standing around her and, and, and just, standing around, just standing there, just standing there, because they saw her skin and it endeared her to them. It was a gift. Go ahead, you can put that up now. We, th we, then we were in Singapore, this amazing island. It's my favorite place, Sentosa Water Park. It's a whole island water park. And we spent time with all the, all the people there in the zoo and the sightseeing. And the, the Chinese pastor and his wife took us out for dinner. And we're sitting there and we're laughing about life. And we'd spent so much time with all the people. And he says something to his wife. You know, and they start to, to, to laugh, yes, yes, yes. And I, I said, what, you know? And, uh, and he said, we've all, we've all been talking at the church, at the church, thousands of people. They, have, they had eight separate campuses that, that they've televised our messages out to. And he said, we've all been talking at church. I said, yeah, yeah. And he said, you, 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 are, you are kiki. Kiki, I said, well, if that means crazy, probably that's what I am, you know? <laughs> I said, I said we're, we're what? He said, you, you and Ashley, you're, you're kiki. I said, what does kiki mean? He said, he tried to come up with the words, and finally he said, well, Kiki, we use that to say, to mean, you, you are just like us. Just like us. I'll tell you what, I've never had a more wonderful compliment in my entire life than the moment that man said to us, you're just like us. 9,000 miles, 9,084 miles away from home. You're just like us. Friends, sometimes we don't recognize our real gifts because we're so busy wishing we had other ones. And because we don't see them, we don't use them in the greater ways that we can use them. Some of you have some talents, some gifts, 
and you were not born with them, but rather they, they were burned into you. Some of you got some talents that were burned into you. Faithfulness was burned into you. Persistence was burned into you. Godly temperament was burned into you. Your ability to endure, it's a talent, and it was burned into you. You did not even know you could do what you did until you did what you did. I talked to a wife this week, sweetest woman. I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm doing the service for a husband who passed next, next Saturday. He's had dementia for 16 years. 16. And she took care of him and took care of him and took care of him all the way. She wouldn't have had it any other way. And she was doing so great talking to me, just talking away, keeping that stiff upper lip. And finally, I, I said to her, I said, Cheryl, I said, what you, have done, what you have done for your husband, how you have loved him, what you have gone through, I said, you are a powerful person. I've been saying that all week long to people. She started to cry. I, I said, you have power and ability and areas that other people don't have it because you only get it when you go through what you went through to get it. I said, you are a powerful person. In, in talking to you today, church, people, you, you're sitting there, you're sitting there and you're looking all innocent and, and, and pretty and harmless, and yet you are a powerful and a talented people. Maybe not in the ways the world measures power and talent, not because you can sing or dance or play an instrument, but because you know how to be faithful and you know how to endure and you know how to pray and you know how to be patient and you know how to encourage and you didn't start out that way. You weren't born with it. You earned it. You have done what you didn't know you, you could do until you did it. Some of you know how to do some things that nobody would even believe that you know how to do. Because when all hell was breaking loose and everybody was running away, you had to pray and figure out how to grab the loose ends and put it all back together again. You had to learn how to rely on God and had to learn to pray your way through when you were going through it. Th this is really the problem Jesus had with the man in the parable that is told that we read at the beginning. He was a rich man, a talented man, and he was a man with time. And we talked about time uh, last week about him having time that he was wanting to waste and how important that was. But on top of that, he had so much talent that he was throwing away too. His gifts and his abilities to bless the kingdom of God. And yet, I'm finished, I'm all done. And sometimes we do that. That, that, that God, we know that God has more in us for to do. We still have the abilities. We still have the gifts. If you're not dead, you're not. What, what was that old saying? Somebody said that to me one time. Right? Right? And, and, and yet we try and get away from God. Do you think God doesn't know where you're going? Do you think he doesn't know where you are and where your gifts are? He does because he needs you and he needs them. Oh my goodness, this man used all of his talent to amass treasure for himself. He used his gift to bless himself. And when he felt he was sufficiently done blessing himself, he was done. His talents weren't gone. His ability to make money wasn't gone. His ability to use his abilities to bless the kingdom weren't gone, diminished, missing. No, it was his own personal choice. He was making a choice to not just waste the rest of his time, but to waste the rest of his talent. My friends, do you know how much talent is stuck in the grave? Do you know how much talent is stuck in the world? Do you know how much talent is stuck in retirement? Talent that could be used for the glory of God? Do you know how much talent is stuck in people who are just hoarding it, who are sitting at home or sitting in a pew? And I'm kind of preaching to the choir here today because you're the most talented using church I've ever seen in my life. So use this message to encourage yourself. Pat yourself on the back. Amen. God has put things inside of you, gifts and abilities and talents, call it whatever you want. But as long as you're breathing, it is trying to get out of you. It's trying to be a blessing. It's trying to serve. It's trying to encourage. It's trying to give. It's trying to teach. It's trying to preach. It's trying to prophesy. It's trying to heal. Listen, Jesus came across this fig tree one day. You know the story. There are no figs on it. And Jesus cursed the tree. And when they came back, the tree was dead. It says Jesus was hungry. When he first saw the tree, he was hungry. And from a distance, Mark tells us, they could see the tree was covered in leaves. Now, let's talk about the characteristics of a fig tree. With fig trees, new fruit usually appears before the leaves even come out. And, 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 and here's, here's, a, here's a picture in number two. Number two, figs are green right up until just before they turn ripe. So the green fruit kind of blends in with the green leaves. And if there's leaves, that usually means there's fruit. 
And, and number three, fig trees produce fruit sometimes 10 out of 12 months out of the year. So when Jesus saw the tree from the distance and, it saw, and saw that it had leaves, he would have had expected it to have fruit. And he was hungry. And when he got up close to it, he saw that there was no fruit on it and he cursed it. And what's the meaning of this? The meaning is that the tree looked good, it looked ripe, it looked ready to meet needs, but it was all window dressing. When you got up close, there was no fruit. Church, the, world, the, wor- the word in this to us is this. God says that as Christians, you're not just supposed to be window dressing. You and I are supposed to be bearing fruit. Go to the next one, Ryan. When we use our talents, gifts, abilities for God to bless others, this is one important way we can lay up treasures in heaven. Who do you want to see in heaven? If I have a heavenly heart and I am kingdom minded, I'm going to use my gifts and my talents for the kingdom. I'm not going to hoard them. I'm not going to be done with them. I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to use them. Go to the next one, Ryan. When, when you are a true Christian, it will be reflected in the way that you use your gifts and abilities to bless the kingdom. It will be obvious. It will be all over you. Friends, we, we can't see the contents of somebody's heart. Jesus, therefore, gave us a sign to look for. He says, you will know them by their fruits. I tell people all the time, you'll know our church by all of our fruits. I tell them all the time. In, in, Luke, in Luke 6, starting in verse 43, it says, for there's no good tree which produces bad fruit, nor, on the other hand, a bad tree which produces good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. For men do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they pick grapes from a briar bush. The good man is out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth what is good. And the evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth what is, 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 is evil. Jesus is speaking here about the words that come out of our mouths, but he's also talking about our actions because God says that words and actions go hand in hand. 1 John 3 says this, Little children, let us love not in merely word and speech, but in deed and truth. Say deed, indeed. And by this we will know that we belong to the truth and we will assure our hearts in his presence. Jesus, oh my word, indeed means action. When it says, but indeed in truth, indeed means in action. Our action to do the things of Christ, to use our gifts, to use our abilities. By this we will know that we belong to the truth. God says that people will also know we are Christians by our fruit. And how do you produce fruit? As Christians, how do we bear fruit? By using all the things the Holy Spirit has put in us, including our gifts. I can't see into your heart, and I can't see into your mind, but, but you can see what's hanging on the tree of my life. You can't see into my mind or my heart, but you can see what's hanging on my life. And either there is fruit there, and if there's fruit there, it's because there is action there. I'm using all that God has put in me to bless the kingdom, or I'm hoarding it. There, there's, there's, there, there's only two ways about it. If you don't see the fruit, it's not because the gifts are not in me. No, because God says the Holy Spirit gives gifts to each of us. Church, don't hoard any gift or talent or ability God has put inside of you. Use it for Him and use it for His kingdom and use it to bless your church and use it to bless your family and use it to bless your, your, bless your friends. Ryan, throw it up there. Don't hoard your gifts. Don't think because somebody else is doing it that you don't need to do it. And I'll show you why. You ready? 1 Corinthians 12. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are varieties of ministries in the same Lord. There are varieties of effects, but the same God who works all things in all persons. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. What's this saying? What, What this is saying is that if you have the gifts of God in you, that just because you have the same gift as somebody else doesn't mean it's going to come out in the same way. Go to the point, throw the point, throw the point. The Spirit of God is working in each of us and wants to come out of us, but come out of us in our own unique way. You and I might both have the same gift of wisdom, but guess what? It's going to come out of us in our own way. You and I might have the same gift of teaching or the, or the gift of, uh, 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 of, of, of healing or the gift of prophesying or the gift of tongues or the gift of faith, and it's all going to come out according to our own unique personality. But here's what all of our gifts have in common the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Look, don't don't look for me to be you, and I won't look for you to be me. We simply use all of our gifts and our talents for the Lord in our own unique ways, and we do this together. And guess how it multiplies our ability 
to bless the kingdom. If Charles does everything exactly like me and I do everything exactly like Charles, Charles, there's, there's no diversity. There, there's, there's, there's no difference. There's no variety. There, there's, there, there's no variety of effects. There's no variety. And, and, and God created us to have some variety. Who you are and what you are and where you are is not a curse. It's a blessing if you recognize that it's God who put you there and made you like that and did that in you. It, it's a blessing. And, and, but if you hoard it and I hoard it, imagine what the world would be like if nobody used their talents or everybody got up and sang and did exactly the same. It would be a sad place. We wouldn't watch American Idol if every person got up and sang the song the exact same way. Hello? Hello? Well, guess what? Guess what? In churches, we have a lot of talent hoarders and gift hoarders, and God wants those people to get out of the mode that they're in and start bearing fruit. If you're in that mode, I want to tell you today, get out of it. If you're stuck in park, or you're stuck in neutral, or you're stuck in reverse, guess what? There's another gear. It's called drive. Mm. If you're in one mode, get out of it. And love not with just words and speech, but get some action going. That's how you really serve God. Action. I can talk about it all day long and never do anything, and that's not fruit. Maybe your talent is crocheting little, little hats for little babies of underprivileged families. Maybe your talent is helping with communion. Maybe your talent is teaching. Maybe your talent is praying for people. Maybe your talent is cleaning the church, kit, church kit, kitten, kitchen, or the kitten, amen? We might have one one day. Linda, Linda, and they can clean that kitchen like you ain't believe. Maybe your talent is helping fix cars. A few weeks ago, a young lady in our church, she's barely making it financially. And, and her car was broken down. It was her lifeline for work. Oh, she didn't have anybody. She asked for prayer. She did not ask me for a dime. She didn't ask for help. She, God, God knows, everybody knows to never let me touch your car, ever, ever, ever. You know, and, and, and she, she said, Pastor, please pray for me. Well, I prayed, and then I also called Ed, Ed Liss. And, uh, and Ed said, Pastor, I got it. Pastor, I got it. And Ed went, Ed went and fixed her car. He knew right away what it, what it was. It's running like a dream. But if Ed had hoarded his talents and abilities, guess what? She might still be without a car. He showed his love how? Through action. You know what he was doing by blessing that girl? He was laying up treasures in heaven. Church, there is ministry to do and there are people to bless. And if you're a Christian, God says there are gifts in you. The problem isn't that God needs to get a gift into you. It said he needs to get the gift out of you. And listen, your gifts are divinely given to you by God for his service. You know what that means? It means use what you got. It also means if you're not using your gifts for God, then you're not really using your gifts. At least not to their fullest potential, because God gave them to you, not to use for the world, but to use for him. Yes, God gives you the ability to do lots of things in the world with your gifts, but the purpose of you using your gifts in the world is to bless the kingdom of God. Oh man, you might have heard that old saying. The old saying says, uh, preach the gospel at all times when necessary, use words. Jesus. That is the stupidest, stupidest saying ever written by any man. That's like saying, go feed the hungry if necessary, use food. Is the word more important than food? Yes. Word more important than life? Yes. I'm just going to shine. If necessary, use words. Just shine. Shine. Say something. Say something. Say something. Friends, let God get the gift out of you. Let the Holy Spirit work through you. Through you means it doesn't stop in you. Not only because it's a great act of laying of treasures in heaven, but because nobody can do what you can do like you can do. Don't, don't, listen, don't hoard it. Don't be shy about it. Don't be embarrassed about it. Nobody can do it like you do it. Nobody can encourage, nobody can encourage me like Margie can encourage me. That's why I have her sit right here in the front every Sunday, right? Listen, no, nobody can encourage, but listen, listen nobody can do it just like her. And I have other people who encourage me like nobody else can encourage me. 
Nobody can seat people in church like Patricia. We got other seaters, but nobody can seat anybody like Patricia, and nobody can seat anybody like the seaters. Nobody can change the atmosphere in the church like Eloise. Other people can change the atmosphere, but not like she does it. I just got a little ping for that one. That was such a good point. If, <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Nobody, nobody can run Faith Farm like Sarah runs Faith Farm. Amen? Nobody. Now, a lot of people can run it, and, and she can't run it like them, but nobody can run it like her. Woo! You see this? You see this? No, nobody can get up where, where, I thought, thought of just some. Nobody can get up there and play, play the trombone like Michael Spohr. Nobody. 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 And, 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 and likewise, likewise, nobody can teach like Stan. Nobody. If you're hoarding any gifts that you have and talents and not using them or you're done using them, you need to get a new, fresh revelation of God's purpose for His gifts in your life. You were created to use your gifts, and when you use your gifts, it bears fruit, and, 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 and that fruit blesses heaven. You ought to be picturing yourself right now. If you're not using the gifts in your life, you ought to be right now getting a fre fresh revelation and seeing yourself using your gifts. There is more for me to do. There is more I can do. There is more I can help. There are ways I can pray, and I can help, and I can bless, and I can teach, and I can heal. Listen, you were created to use your gifts. And listen to this. When you use the talents God gave you for his purposes, it shows him that you appreciate his works. When, let me say it again. When you use the talents that God gave you for his purposes, it shows God that you appreciate what he gave you. And guess what he'll do? He'll give you more opportunities to use them, more. When, when, you, when you give God a talent, put it up there, will you, Ryan? When, when God gives you a talent, he expects you to use it. it. It's like a muscle. If you use it, it'll grow. I'm the only person who uses my muscles at the gym and nothing grows. I'm the only person. But for everybody else in the world, it, it works. If you don't use it, you'll lose it. Our talents, go there. Our talents are an investment God has made in us. I want God to have a great return on his investment. We all ought to want that. The rich man that Jesus told the story about, he was rich because he was gifted. He had all sorts of gifts that gave him the ability to increase, and he had great property, and he had, oh man, productive land, and he, was used, and he used it to get everything that he wanted for himself, and then he was, I'm out. What a tragedy. He still had the gifts, he had the ability, he had the talents, he had the land, he had the wealth, but he was done because he had enough for him. Oh, Lord, forgive us. Forgive us that we're done if we get enough for us. Look, I could read you a study after intensive study that proves that people who use their gifts are healthier, they worry less, they stress less, they have less anger, less sadness, less physical pain, and they got more energy to face the day. They got more positive emotions. They engage better in tasks. Proven. They found that people who focus on using their gifts, they're 13% more productive every day. I mean, I could use all, all of these as a reason, but the reason I don't use it is because, because all this points to is your benefit. And if you really want to serve Jesus, you want to be a serious man or woman of God, guess what? you need to recognize that you already have every benefit there is in heaven. So everything that you do for God, you don't do it so it benefits me. Hey, pastor, how does it benefit me? Serving God is not about benefiting you. You've already got all the benefits. Serving God is about benefiting the kingdom of heaven. I do what I do not to bless me because I'm already blessed up to my receding hairline. Amen? No. I do it to bless the kingdom. I preach, why? To bless the kingdom. I worship, why? To bless the kingdom. I teach to bless the kingdom. Oh, I, listen, I pray to bless the kingdom. I prophesy because it blesses the kingdom. I don't care if it benefits me. Blah! Throw that up and throw it out. I write songs not hoping I can have a number one record and be a world famous rock star worship leader. I write them to bless the kingdom of God. Yeah, that's why I don't wear a beanie and skinny girl jeans. Amen? Use, use your gifts to bless the kingdom. Ashley, Ashley didn't write this book so, so that she could become this world-famous publisher. No, she's doing it herself. Why? To bless the kingdom. Take no thought of what it does for you and use it. 
People will come and hear about Jesus because you use your gift. People will be in heaven because you use your gift. People will be saved and encouraged and blessed and prophesied to and taught and healed. Why? Because you refused to lay down and you used your gift. Because when they were hungry, there you were, full of fruit, and you fed them. Church, don't be a fruitless fig tree. There are hungry people in the world starving. They're starving spiritually. They're, 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 they're hungry. They are Jesus hungry. They are truth hungry. They are heavy hungry. Heaven hungry, they are healing hungry, they are encouragement hungry, they are faith hungry. Somebody needs wisdom, somebody needs a miracle, somebody needs knowledge. Woo! And when they come to you, you ought to be covered in the, in the fruit that they need that will fill them up. When people came to Jesus, he was walking in his gifts, so he was able to fill them up. Walk in your gifts. When people come, came to the disciples, they were walking in their gifts, so he was able to fill them up. You want to lay up treasures in heaven, use your gift for the kingdom, and heaven will fill up. Amen? If you've got the gift of prophecy and you're not prophesying, you're wasting time. If you've got a gift of singing to the Lord, but you're not singing, you're wasting time. If you've got a gift for teaching and you're not teaching for the Lord, you're wasting time. And time is running out in other people's lives who need your gift. Stop hoarding it or hiding it or, 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 or quenching it. The Bible says don't quench the Holy Spirit. You want to quench the Holy Spirit, then don't use the gift that is in you. Hoard it up inside of you. Stifle it. Suppress it. Restrain it. And you're going to feel it. God says don't do that. What was the scripture? 1 Corinthians 7, 7. And don't be wishing you were someplace else or someone else. Where you are right now is God's place for you. Live and obey and love and believe right there. Obey. You got a gift in you, obey. Get busy. When I was younger, uh, I was in some commercials. I was a stand-in for some movies they shot at our high school. I was an extra. You can see me in the background walking around. And let me tell you, let me tell you, a movie set is the most chaos you have ever seen in your life. There, there are just, there, there could be hundreds of people. Sometimes, sometimes scenes have thousands of people with machinery and horses and, and, and explosions. You can see all, all these movies that you go see. And let me tell you though, it does not matter what is going on when the director says action. Woo! When he says that man, all the actors and the extras and the helpers and the horses and the guns and the bombs all start moving. All the stagehands all start moving at the same time and playing their role exactly how they're supposed to be playing it. Nobody does anything that they're not supposed to do. Nobody does anything other than what they're supposed to do. And when the director says action, nobody just stands in place unless they're supposed to stand in place. They're all moving and all doing their part. And the scripture says don't just love with words or speech but with action and truth. God is saying to you today, action, action. Get on the stage and play your role. Play your part and bless the kingdom of God. My word from God to you today is this, with your gifts, action. With your abilities, action. With your talents, action. Use what you've got and take action in Jesus' name. Amen? Let's give God praise. Amen, 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 amen. Let's pray. Let's pray. God, we come to you in Jesus' name, and today is a day of action. Action during praise and worship. It was a time of breaking, God, and now it's a time of action, God. When, 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 when you break us, you take us, and then you remake us, Father, and make us today. Make us, God. Make us into everything that you want us to be. We, we surrender ourselves completely to you. Do exactly and all that you want to do, God. We, we, we need to, God, we need to get a revelation that where we are and who we are and who we're with and what we're doing, God, and what we are and how we are, it's exactly, it's exactly how you created us to be. Whether we're single, whether we're married, whether we're man, whether we're woman, teenager, child, God, you have us exactly where you need us to be and what you need us to be and how you need us to be. We, we are, there's not an area of our life, God, that you have, you have created, created us that is cursed. We are blessed in Jesus. Everything about us is a blessing. Everything about us is blessed. Where we are and who we are and how we are, God. 
we are right where we need to be, Father, to take action. To take action. And God, for any person sitting there that feels, I, I don't have any gifts, oh, may they do some, 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 some reality today, some soul searching today, and see that you said you've given a gift to each person. And, 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 and maybe either they don't recognize it, or they haven't found it yet, or they haven't recognized that they, that they have a prophetic gift, or that they have a gift to be able to pray for somebody. They have a gift of miracles, God. They, they, they have a gift of faith, God. They have a gift of encouragement. They got all these things. And, and God, today is our day to step into and step up in our gifts and in our ministries, God, and to take action in Jesus' name. So if you're sitting there, and, and you've got a gift in you that you know you've got today, say to God, God, use me in my gift. Today I want to take action. I'm hearing you say action. Today I'm taking action, God. I'm going to get busy about the things that you have gifted me with the ability to be busy in. Use me, God. Use me, God. Motivate me, God. Move me, God. Use me, God. If you got something, maybe you haven't used it, maybe you're hoarding it, maybe you're stifling it, maybe you're repressing it. Oh God, say God forgive me. I, I, I am, I'm going to use what I got till I got the last breath in me. I'm going to use it for you in Jesus' name. I need to get back to using my gifts. I need to get back to using the abilities that you've given me, God. Some of you got gifts and abilities that nobody in this church even knows that you got. I, I bet you some, some of you got gifts that I don't even know what you got because you're hoarding them, you're holding on to them. And you're not using them for the glory of the kingdom. Today God says action. He says to you, action in Jesus' name. Action. Action. It's time to get busy. It's time to get busy with kingdom things. We're moving into 2018. It's time to be busy with kingdom things. And if you're here today and you haven't discovered that gift, then I pray right now that God will begin to reveal to you your special gifting that you have inside of you. And even come and talk to me if you don't know what your gift is. Come and talk to Pastor Ashley and I and, and we'll walk you through it and we'll talk you through it and we'll pray about it with you and we'll see what your gift is and where God can use you. And some of you operate in the gifts and, 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 but maybe you've been operating in the wrong way or with the wrong attitude. And so God today wants you to have the right attitude to go with the right gift. Amen? Maybe, you, maybe, you've been, maybe you've been down about, about whenever you use your gift, you're negative about it. Whenever you use your gift, you're harsh about it. Whenever you use your, you got to use your gift, you're bitter about it, like a kid having to take out the garbage. Oh, i got to use my gift. No, get yourself over that right now in Jesus' name. And put on that, that joy that you got about it. i got a gift from God. Put on that, that, that love. Put on that graciousness on you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for my gift. Thank you, God, for my gift. And if you're here today and you've never trusted God with your life, you've never believed in Jesus and trusted in Jesus, Jesus today, He wants to be your everything. His Holy Spirit wants to come in and fill you full of gifts. Jesus wants to forgive you of your sins. He wants to relieve you of that, that, that backwards walk in the world, all the sins in the world. He wants to relieve you of all of that. He wants to make you a brand new creation in God. And I'm going to pray a prayer right now. And if you're tired of living in the world and tired of living the world's way and tired of carrying around sin and guilt and shame and condemnation today, God says you can be free from all those things. Today you can be forgiven. All that stuff in your past you always think about, you carry all the guilt about, and you carry the shame about. Today God says you can be forgiven from all of it. So I'm going to pray right now. And it's a prayer where we believe in Jesus. We ask Him to forgive us of our sins. We, we repent. There has to be repentance. We, we say, God, I'm going to turn away from walking the world's way, and I want to live for You. I turn away from my sins. So I'm going to pray it right now, and say it after me. Everybody else, say it in this place right now. Say, God, today, I hear You knocking, and I open up my heart. Jesus, Son of God, forgive me of all my sins. I repent. I turn from my wicked ways. I don't want to live for the world anymore. I want to live for you. I want to go your way. I want to live your way. I want to love your way. I want to trust your way. 
Come in and give me everything you got. Holy Spirit, give me all your gifts. God, give me all your promises. Jesus, give me brand new life. Thank you for forgiving me of all my sins. Take over my life now. I believe in you, Jesus. I trust in you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Let's thank him right now. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to sing you a love song, Jesus. I'm so crazy about the way it changed my life. I'm going to tell the world about the love between us. Because my heart has never felt a love song.